Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know that I am super glad to be here. This is a 2007 Saturn, I believe it's the View model. It's got the 3.5 liter V6. So, funny little thing about these Saturns. Uh, this is a brand loyalty nightmare. And I don't mean brand loyalty as in the consumer having loyalty to their brand. This is an act of treachery from the manufacturers being disloyal to their customers. See, this is a Saturn vehicle. Saturn was a, an offshoot of the General Motors Corporation built on a GM platform. But this 3.5 liter V6 is a Honda engine. You see this thing right here? This has Honda written all over it. That's Honda, this intake is Honda, these valve covers are Honda, these ignition coils are Honda. This is a Honda drivetrain in a rebadged GM product. So when I say that this is an act of treachery, I believe it's uh, rooted in deception. And GM, Saturn, Honda, and everybody else, they're, uh, they're all guilty of it. Uh, for example, the Jeeps, Jeeps are Fiat products uh, a lot of uh, a lot of jeeps are found to have fiat components in them fiat drivetrains they're built on fiat uh, platforms uh there's some mercedes mixed in there opal mixed in there cadillac's the same way everybody's just sharing parts everywhere yeah. the oems are playing on brand loyalty from the customers and it's just a fallacy at this point it's all just this big mishmash uh mishmash of parts and manufacturers, which I think is uh, it's not fair because people want to, uh, they want to buy a product that they think is is either American made or it's uh, uh, it's made overseas. They they think they bought something specifically from the region where it was originated from, and that's just not the case. The only thing that indicates such things is the badge that they put on the side of it. The Jeep Patriot, in my opinion, is the worst offender. Uh, you know, the Patriot implies American made. Jeep is known to be an American made company, but you're driving around in a Fiat, and I couldn't. Tell Tell you how many people think that they have a domestically produced vehicle that was actually just made overseas very not fair hello darling wife Hi. unit how I are need you the mileage on this mileage on this particular vehicle is 20,188 miles on the odometer oh, that's it? yes oh, it is right. well the reason being is do you see that thing out front go look out front at the bumper over there this particular Saturn has an RV tow bar package see that right there yeah. that means you can hook this thing up to your RV and you tow it around uh, kind of another act of deception because although the odometer says that there's 20,000 miles on this, this thing may have been towed behind somebody's Class A motorhome uh, for tens of thousands of miles. Yep. Yeah. So the chassis and the drivetrain might have, you know, 60,000 miles on it, but the engine's got 20,000 miles on it. Again, another act of deception. <laughs> uh huh. You see how that works? Yeah, I like that. Now you see. Anyway, customer states uh, on this particular Saturn Honda GM product that there is like a pulsating while driving. Uh, they complained of a noise from the engine compartment, which I have not yet heard so far. Uh, these Honda engines were pretty good, so uh, I don't see or suspect an issue with our engine, but uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and take it on the road and see if we can duplicate some of these concerns, and then we can go from there. So, stay tuned, because this is gonna be a very, Good video. Closing the hood. Opening the hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. Driving in dirt when you're really slow and then you push on the brakes really hard, it kind of the back brakes grab and they kind of stick. Yeah. Um, and skid and. Oh, said, so the the not, drums are locking up. Probably, yeah. Okay. Not necessarily on the pavement, but he said definitely in dirt. Okay. Um, also, when you're going and you have you got a stoplight, um, the engine vibrates and rattles. He's thinking it's the muffler pipe that's rattling. Okay. Because um, it idles pretty rough, and then uh, clicking when going high to low. Uh, uh, what was that? What was that? Um, so my my notes here. Oh, like the actuators clicking, uh, or something like that. The AC actuator, yes. So yes. when you're going from like overhead, when you're well, no, when you're going, when you're vents? going um, from high vents to low vents, yeah. Okay. When you're the higher and the lower. So we got a air. clicking actuator. Yeah. We got brakes that are locking up and low traction environments. And I forgot the other thing already. What was the other thing? The the. <laughs> Hey, will you help me? Since we have a low traction environment out in the parking lot, sure. would you mind um, checking to see if I'm locking up of the course. rear brakes while braking? Thank you, darling. 
Here, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hop in this unit here and we're gonna go back and forth through the gravel. She's gonna watch and we're gonna see if these rear brakes lock up when braking. So we're gonna go with that one first because that's the safety issue. Brakes are always a safety issue, so that takes priority over everything else. And uh, I guess then we'll go from there. Hmm, I don't hear it. I heard some squeaking noises. Let's go forward, see what it does in the forward motion range. Ding. Did they lock up? I couldn't tell. I can't tell. I'll do I it again. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it again. Time. Hang on here. Back I'll it up. stand over here. All right, you stand there. Let's go out on the row ad. I think we heard it. I know I heard it from that side and I'm pretty sure the other side was locking up too. So low traction environments, we have a, a brake lockup issue. We, we might just have to adjust the drums. Here's some squeaking noise. Yeah, ABS just went off. Yep, brakes are locking up. All right. Okay, that is one thing checked off the list. Let's get her out on the road here. Engine feels good. Transmission feels good. That cold wind out there does not feel good. Winders up. Okay, let's check for uh I hear some squealing out back. Okay. Yeah, something's going on with the rear brakes on this thing for sure. Definitely, I, I can feel that the right rear, right rear, why wheel, wheel, I can feel that the right rear is definitely grabbing more than it should be because the right side of the vehicle is kind of dipping and squatting when I brake. It's really hard to see on camera, but I can thousand percent feel it. Oh, there's the clicking. I just switched from defrost to, uh, our floor vents here and we've got a clicking actuator in the dash yep there she is again clicking actuator i'm gonna pull out in front of that truck because i can make it we're good here as long as someone doesn't change lanes in the intersection we're fine don't change lanes in an intersection I mean, nobody knows how to use their turn signals and then what will happen is folks go into an intersection and that's when they decide to change lanes and uh, that is exactly how you get run over or smashed into or smashed into somebody else so uh, if we're all gonna be driving around in cars we need to figure out what these uh, all these switches and buttons mean and uh, know how to operate them properly driving tip of the day see I used my turn indicator when you flip this thing up what it does is it makes that little arrow flash and that arrow is not really for you that's just to let you know that uh, your indicators are on and what those are are actually lights on the outside of your car that they light up and flash and blink that way other people around you know what you intend to do but if you don't use those what'll happen is no one knows what's going on and then you're just weaving all through traffic doing whatever you want and you're confusing people around you <laughs> And this is how we run into each other. And the problem with that is, is since we all have to have insurance, when uh, uh, when lesser mortals fail to use their equipment properly and they cause traffic collisions, that means as a collective, our entire social gathering of insurers now have to pay more money for insurance because we have to settle down to the level of the lowest common denominator. Motivating, isn't it? Coming up to a stop, I'm not feeling any vibrations out of the brakes. Just a little bit of noise and we're off. That's very green. See the thing? Wow. Back at the shop, I'm gonna use my left-hand turn indicator 
to indicate that I'm turning left and the guy behind me is trying to run into me. Good thing I have brake lights. Congested parking lot. Come on out, parts people. Come on out. Hello, O'Reilly's. Thank you, sir. Moving along. Okay, pull this unit on in here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is identify which one of those actuators is our clicking actuator, and then uh, we'll get this thing set up on the rack, and uh, we can check out those rear brakes. Parking the auto. Okay, into the passenger side, because that clicking was on the passenger side. Okay, so what we need to do is drop this glove box door down. If we can get it to come down, how do I get in there? Um, it was fun. I love laying on the ground. I'm not hearing it now. Okay. How do I get the door out? I'm gonna have to pull this whole section thing out of here, I think. Now, let's see. Yeah, that's buried in there. Okay, let me take this stuff apart real fast and see if I can't uh, get all this uh, this trim and whatnot out of the way. Okay, stand by. Okay, we're gonna need to get this glove box removed. So it looks like I need to pull these little pins out of gravity out of the hinge area here. So I'm getting behind them with a trim tool. Just kind of work those. Here we go. Pins coming out. Okay, that's one hinge. Now we'll get that other one removed. This side here. Tight squeeze situation. Close quarters combat. Push that little trim guy in there and walk that pin out. That's gonna let this glove box door come all the way out. That should give us some access to some more fasteners. There we go. Okay. I'm a light. Flashlight, gravity in action. The magnet's not really magnetizing on the, uh, the plastic here. Let's pull out that door check right there that keeps the door from flopping down when you open it. Pull this guy out, set you aside over here. Good. So now we've got access to a bunch of other fasteners. Looks like some maybe nine thirty seconds of an inch. I guessed correctly. All right. So we're going to pull this one, this one, probably these guys up top, and then try to remove this panel right here. Off to the right, there's a couple more little push pins. These look like they're from a Toyota. Just pull these guys out. And that should make the side panel come free, which, woohoo, that was scary. Okay, side panel's removed. Got one electrical connector, that's for the uh, door switch. That's what tells the dash if the door is open or closed. Uh, let's see, what else do we have going on here? Yeah, wherever those actuators are, they're buried back there. Okay. All right, we're coming in with the electron ratchet. Let's start pulling out these fasteners. There we go. Couple up high. I'm probably gonna remove more than I need to, but I'm not really certain. How many I've got to pull out of this thing? And a few more down low. Stick that which is stuck. Or wiggle it some. It'll come out. There's something like a stud up there hanging on to it. 
There we go. Just a tight squeeze, I think. There. Yeah, yeah, there was a stud coming through that little hole right there. Okay. Set this thing aside. And what else are we captured by here? I don't know. Here. Oh, there's a fastener up here. Let's get that one out. Remove center console. Remove dash. Okay, I think I need to pull this panel out as well. This little kick panel trim piece on the side, which is runs all the way back to the B pillar. Let's pull this guy out. And we've got a 10 mil fastener here. I think that that's hanging on to this because this is riveted to that right there. So I gotta pull that 10 mil out as well. Okay, switching out to the 10 millimeter. And that didn't really help much. Okay, that's fine. So after more poking and prodding, I pulled this panel back and then realized that this panel is part of this panel, which is part of that panel which is, has this panel bolted onto it and this panel. Um, that's, I'm not pulling the dash apart to get to this actuator. I'm gonna have to, have to figure something else out because this is, a, this is supposed to be a 1.8 hour job and pulling this dash apart is not something that I want to do and I'm, I'm not gonna do. So I'm gonna find a shortcut to get to that actuator back there. Um, I'm probably just gonna have to flip over, get my noggin down inside of there and then look up and feel around while operating the uh the knob over here to see which one of those which one of those actuators is clicking away because i'm i'm not pulling this entire dash out to get to one stupid little 35 dollar part that's just not gonna happen. all right let's get resituated here there's got to be some kind of a shortcut there just has to be going in oh this is gonna be fun okay so i suspect that it's the one that's way up there. So let me reach over, getting a hold of the uh, the knob here. That's it. We're gonna turn that knob and see if we can't excite this actuator. I was turning the wrong knob. Okay. Turn the other way. Come on, knob. Ah, there we go. Which one is it? I think it's the one straight up. Yeah, we've only got a couple seconds to cause the symptom and then it goes away again. Let's see here. All right, so since I'm not taking this thing apart, what I'm gonna have to do is just reach up through this hole here and uh, try to do this left-handed. So I've got the connector, stick that thing aside if we go up in that hole we can should be able to see where that actuator go there she is looks like there's three fasteners one pointing at us there's another one a little higher up like right right in there somewhere then there's another one Ooh. there's another one hiding out way up there behind this uh piece of insulation and I'm probably gonna have to cut away at that piece of insulation because that third bolt is inside of a, see that little divot right up there? Move connector, see that little, little half moon shape, little cutout? That's where the third one is. So I need to reach in there with a wee little ratchet. That's our guy, eight millimeter. And we're just gonna try to feel this to get it to come apart. I don't know if this is gonna work. Or if it's going to be a big giant failure and I have to pull the dash out anyway, but we're going to try it. Let's see what happens here. Okay, there's one. Yeah, this is uh, this is not how I wanted to just spend my morning. Unfortunately, the, the ability to view this is rather limited. And uh, I offer my apologies on such things. Ooh, that's the hard one right there. Let me get in there. Oh yeah, buddy. 
there's hope. That's the hard to reach bolt right there, I think. And I got a, got a tool on it. I'm not even looking at what I'm doing. I'm actually looking through the camera. Come on, you. Thank you. Come on now. There it is. Okay, one more. Tell me that was the easier one. Here, you guys go up and tell me if you see it. I don't see it. Okay, right, I think it's right here. Yeah, that's not working. Oh, we're on it. I'm on it. Hang on. Yeah, that's the third fastener. Yeah, this ought to be fun to put back, but at least we're getting somewhere here. There she is. Okay, actuator. Oh, no, you don't. Well, it's off, but this stupid, uh, what you call it, insulation business is hanging me up here. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Sweet. Okay. Well, I got it out of there. Now I gotta get myself out of here. Oh. Dang. So this is our unit. Hmm. Let's go take it apart and see if the gears are stripped out. I'm sure it's got a bad gear inside. Oh man. Carpal tunnel. That hurt. Okay, uh, screwdriver, screwdriver, this one. So let's see. A couple screws here. Four of them. Then what I've got to do is just separate the two halves here. Dry driver. And inside of this actuator, we have a little electric motor with a worm gear and a few other gears that run all the way up to the output drive. And there's our winner right there. There's a broken tooth. Broken tooth right here, that one's stripped out. Let's check uh, these other units here. Mm, this one looks decent. Yeah, this one's got a bit of wear on it. I see the, the gears kind of have a divot in them. Okay. And then our worm gear drive. Uh, that one's okay. So yeah, one little plastic gear has caused the slippage and the clickage and has shut down the operation of this component. Let's put that guy back for now. It's probably not how it came apart. Oh, I ruined it. Anyway, 
that actuator is no good. I cannot get replacement gears. Therefore, we have to replace uh, this entire assembly with a new motor, new gears, all that good stuff, etc. So let me go get one of those things ordered and uh, we'll see what I can do about shoving that thing back up into that hole and uh, getting it bolted down. Now, a lot of times folks will just put in the two easier bolts and that is a no-go. You've got to get all three bolts in. If you don't get all three of them in, this thing will twist and move around and bend and flex and it'll ultimately uh, either break internally or it will break the uh, the driven side, which is the door. And then I really do have to pull the dash out to fix the door. So like I said, let's go get that stuff ordered. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Well, in an unfortunate turn of events, I cannot get that actuator today. I had to order it. There's one up in Tampa, which is at least a day away. So uh, I cannot put that actuator back together in the dash just yet. So we're gonna move on to these rear brakes and see what's going on with this locking up uh, brake situation here. Not sure what the dealio is. Maybe there's uh, new shoes that are installed backwards or perhaps they're over adjusted. I kind of think they're over adjusted. You know, at 20,000 miles, I can't see any reason why uh, the brakes should be locking up. I suppose that's fine because I spent plenty of time on my back and contorted reaching up behind that dash so i guess i can get a break i'll just go back in tomorrow whoa don't fall off there wheel oh, my nuts fell down oh, i just want them recovered okay so Hmm. Look at here. These drum brakes have never been removed from the vehicle before. See that little uh, little clip thing right there? Those are installed on the assembly line to prevent the uh, the drums from falling off when they flip the chassis over and move it around. So that tells me that no one has ever been inside of these drums uh, before. Once upon a time, I had a customer get very upset because they saw me uh, take a pair of side cuts break this clip off and they waited until after we were done with the brakes and then inquired as to whether we were going to replace that clip to which we stated no sir oh look at that we are not going to replace that clip and i explained loud and i explained why i was not going to replace that clip and he felt that since the factory had put it there then i should put it back the problem is is those are not really um I mean, you can't really locate those. You can't get new ones because it's not a, it, well, it's a non-issue. It's not something that, uh, that goes back together. But the guy complained to corporate and corporate gave him his money back for the entire job because we failed to secure his brake drum to the vehicle or something like that. Funny how a corporate complaint line works, isn't it? customer is always going to get their money back because all you have to do is complain because it's just not worth the uh not worth the fight now me personally i'll die on that hill because i do not like to acquiesce to the ignorance of certain situations what do you guys think should we go out of our way to put this back even though it'll never ever ever be used again let me know comments down below Hmm, I think I see a, a problem here. I'm wondering if these cylinders are leaking. Let's find out. Now what I'll do is take a little pocket driver here and get behind this little dust boot. Fairly certain these are leaking. And look at that, yep, brake fluid pouring out of them. See that right there? It's not okay. Let's see, yep, that's definitely a leaking wheel seal wheel cylinder brake cylinder let's check the other side here and that one yeah that's pretty nasty in there too come look on this direction it's all full of like corroded rust nasty business all right let's go check uh the severity of the leak on the driver's side over here let's see what uh what this one's looking like it's ready for its close-up Yep, 
leaking everywhere. Look at that. Not okay. Yep, same thing on that side, leaking everywhere. So we have contaminated, leaking, nasty brake fluid. And I imagine that all this, this is all brake dust combined with brake fluid. See that right there? It's not okay. All right, so what I'm gonna wanna do is replace these guys at the bare minimum. I'm gonna recommend some shoes because this brake dust business has been floating around inside of this drum for who knows how long. Uh, probably since uh, 2007 and it's embedded itself into these shoes right here see this difference in color in the wear pattern see that right there that little uh little hue going on that stuff is embedded inside of the shoe and because of that these shoes are now contaminated that's probably why they are uh they're locking up and binding so i'm going to suggest we do a set of shoes and a, uh, a set of wheel cylinders on this. So let me go see if this stuff's uh, available and orderable, and then we'll go from there. All right, we have a green light to proceed, so let's get this stuff taken apart. We're gonna pull the shoes out. Once the shoes are out, we can, uh, we can get these cylinders off of here. I've already ordered the replacement components. They should be in route momentarily. Let's see, I think I'll get the bottom spring out of there next. It's kind of pry driver. Nope, nope. That one's too hard. This one's easier. Or not. What? Why won't you come out there, springs? There we go. I can pop this spring out right here. Or not. Why are we not coming out, springs? I know we'll collapse these shoes slightly so what I'll do is I'll pull them back let me move you guys down some what I'll do here is I'll pull these straight the shoes off of their little stop plate right here and then bring it forward and let it collapse inward some there we go remove spring tension smarter not harder so now I can pull that spring out like so the springs are in good shape. I'm going to reuse them. In order to cut down some cost here, so let's pull the top spring out next. This is also, or this also has the uh, the adjuster lever on it. Now, what I'm not going to do is take both sides apart at the same time. That way, if I need to reference where the components go, I could go over to the other side and uh, take a look at that. So we'll pull this one out right here, set that off to the side. Now, we've got this uh, little lever right here for the parking brake cable. That's the cable right there. I believe this is gonna stay and I have to remove this from the shoe. So we need to get behind this little clip and bend it over and push the clip off of this pin right here. Oh, here's our adjuster. Uh, this is the actual slack adjuster for the brakes. We need to check these to make sure they're not bound up as well. And this one is not, so we'll clean that off. That gets reused as well. Good. So, this little horseshoe clip looking business here. We need to get in there with a, with a pry driver and wedge this thing open without letting it slip because I don't want to stab myself. The thing about drum brakes is you can really hurt yourself via stabbings and pokings where you slip a screwdriver or a prying device and you'll, uh, you'll slice yourself open. It's actually quite hazardous if done improperly. So you always leave yourself an out, you know, if you're stabbing Stab away from yourself, not towards yourself. Let's get some pliers on it. Just kind of push. See the slipping and the stabbing? Yeah, this car is trying to hurt me today. Between the carpal tunnel syndrome and the potential stabbing, it's a dangerous vehicle for a Honda, and it's a liar. Dangerous for a Honda Saturn GM product. Get back behind that with the screwdriver, pry that guy up and out. 
We've got a little spring-loaded shim washer thing to keep some tension on that so it can't wiggle its way loose later on. And that is our rear-sided shoe. So we'll set this thing down right there and waiting for my replacement component. So while we wait, I'll roll in the uh, oil drain here and we can clean up all this nasty buildup business that's on the backing plate. Now this is gonna be one of the very few times when we actually use brake cleaner to clean brakes. Uh -huh. Give it a hose down. Starting at the top, working our way down to the bottom. Get all that nasty out of there. By nasty coagulated brake fluid buildup. Clean the bearing off. Okay, now we can go ahead and pull this leaking defective cylinder out of here and prep this for the replacement to arrive. Now, in order to not spill all the brake fluid, what we're gonna do is pinch off this line. Uh, I actually do have some little clamps that are for uh, brake lines, but they happen to be in use right now. So what I'll do is just use some, uh, some vice grips. They're very flat, see that? They're not, uh, not super jagged. We'll just go ahead and vice grip this line a little bit. Just to, just to squeeze the rubber hose. Nothing crazy, but just enough to kind of pinch that off. Then over here on the back side, we've got a, a wrench on the fitting, or we'll put a wrench on the fitting right here. And then there should be like two eight millimeter bolts. There's one, and there's gonna be one on the other side. And that will unbolt this, uh, this cylinder from the backing plate. Here, I'll get the, uh, the fitting first. Because if I take the bolts loose first, then when I try to take the nut off this fitting, it can actually just rotate the uh, cylinder and twist it up and make it not want to come apart. So we'll just take this guy loose like so. Or not. Thing just slipped right off, didn't it? Unclick. There we go. If I really need to, I suppose I can pull the... Uh... And you know what? I'm just going to do that. I'll pull the bleeder valve out of it. Wrong direction. Okay, there's our bleeder valve right there. See, it's got a hole in the middle of it, so uh, fluid can flow out when it's opened. That'll give me plenty of wrench space here to get the fitting off. Very good. Almost, come on. We're gonna see some fluid spill because there is some inside of the cylinder. Ooh, cylinders are here. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll take the two eights out next. There's one. And the second one is kind of hiding out behind this line. I cannot reach. I know, extension. Did my cylinder show up before your transmission mount did? Yeah. That's silly. There we go. Okay, got it. So here is our nasty leaking wheel cylinder. Right ya. That guy. Toss that aside. Got a new one. It just got here. Fortuitous timing. Here, let's compare real quick like got our bleeder got the line two mounting holes for the bolts and yep that's our unit so let's go ahead and straighten those out in the direction they're supposed to be in which is vertical that one's already pretty good 
Okay. Let's get rid of that little plug right there. And this guy just plugs right into the backing plate. The bleeder goes at the top. That's uh, important. Put that guy in right there. Stay. All right, let me flip my ratchet around here. So the extension is still back there on that fastener. See it right there? And I'll twist the extension and the bolt to get the thread started. There we go. Okay, that one's started. Let's get the next one in position here. And before I tighten down the cylinder, let's get the threads started on the line fitting. Sometimes they don't want to. They don't want to go. There we go. Did I hear you guys say death trap? No. Talk about the Miatas. Yes, Miatas are death traps. They're like little roller skates. Can't say that. I won't tighten it just yet. We'll tighten down the two bolts on the side first. other one here. I think I had too much extension. That's fine now. Clickage. Now we can torque down the fitting. Here, well, you know what? While we're doing that, I'll go ahead and take the bleeder loose. open the bleeder up and we'll pull the vice grip off the line. That way we can let the fluid start to flow into this cylinder. Just to expedite things ever so slightly. Good and tight, and we should start to see fluid any moment now. A little bit more brake clean on the uh, adjuster over here just to clean off all that residual spillage. Very good. Come on, fluid. We're waiting on you. Hmm. Might have to go inside and pump it up with a healthy helper later on. I grow impatient. Okay, so I have some shoes here. Throw some lubricant on these backing plates. A little bit right there on the contact points. That's good. Let's get our shoes set up in a position next. So what I'll do is put our little clip and washer down right there and we'll get, yeah, that's how she goes. Okay. So we'll get our lever in position first. You guys can't see. Here we go. Get our little horseshoe business clip thing pushed through here. Let's 
squeeze it in with some plot. Gravity. Oh, trying again. Squeeze that guy in there. Yeah, there's a little groove in that pin. This thing has to slip inside of that groove. If I can just force it. No. Well, that was silly. Come on. How many times must I fail? All of them. We will fail every time until we stop failing. Okay, let's try with the other pliers. Getting somewhere, not really. There we go. Squeeze that guy together. It's gonna retain the lever on that pin, just like so, see that? So now, take that guy, flip it up, and we need to line up this area here with the groove in the cylinder. And then right here, see this little pin right there? That pin comes through the back of the backing plate. That's the retainer pin for the shoe. And that goes through one well, of the holes here. So we hold this thing in position like so. Then I can get the spring and the retainer over that pin. Slide that guy over. I'm holding the back of the pin with my flange on the back side of the backing plate. Open that up some more. There is a tool for this, but I'm set in my ways and I like to use uh, my pliers. Rotate it, that pin is in position. Locked in, good to go on this side. So now, we repeat procedure on the other side. Let's see, that's the bottom spring, so we're gonna pull that through this little hole over here on the right. See that hole right there? You don't. That spring goes behind the shoe and comes out through that hole right there, okay? We will then take our adjuster and slide this notch over the, the brake lever and the notch that is in the shoe's uh, backing plate itself. That goes that way. Uh, what I like to do is actually adjust these down all the way. It just makes it easier for assembly and then we can adjust them back out uh, after it's all put back together. So the top side spring that one's gonna go through this little hole right over here and just kind of hook in. The guy rides right there, and we'll hook that up to the other shoe in a moment. We'll take our other shoe and our adjuster rod and slide that into the groove in this pin. This guy is gonna hook on right here onto the adjuster, and we're gonna give it a tug while simultaneously getting this wrong. Hang on. I'll try this a different way. There's not enough space to do it that way. These are not all completed in the exact same fashion. I need to get these two grooves lined up with these grooves in this adjuster. See that right there? So what I'll do is I'll set this side up first and then guide it in on the big side of the adjuster. We also have to take care to not run these shoes up against the seals on uh, gravity on the cylinder. Yeah, this stuff's gonna get dropped a lot. That's just the way it is. These are not the easiest uh, brakes to replace. And I know there's folks out there that do a better job at this than I do and 
You're probably gonna re out on me in the comments about how wrong I'm doing it. That's fine. But everybody's different. And if I feel like doing it the hard way, then so be it. I'll do it the hard way. Besides, if I didn't do it the hard way, what else would you complain about? Ooh. There we go. Okay. Now, seeing how this is all delicate and trying to fall apart, I'm going to go ahead and get the retainer pin in from the backing plate just to hold this shoe in position. I'm going to do that right now. So there's our spring. Fires. Let's get a good bite on it. Twist it. Locked in. Okay. So now, I think I would like to get this spring, the bottom spring, hooked up first. Oh, come on. That's okay. See that? Let's get back at that adjuster again real quick since it fell apart. Come on, almost there. A little bit more. Stay. Okay, so tops of the shoes are in the grooves on the cylinder. We've got the adjuster wheel in position, the adjuster arm, the spring, down below the other spring, and we just need to take this shoe and flip it around to the back side of its little stop right here. So we'll grab it right here, not on the friction material. I'll pry it down. Bang, just like so. Now these shoes are set up in position, they're locked in. Now all I need to do is go in here with an adjuster, back that wheel off, separate and spread out the shoes, and then adjust them properly against the drums. There are little uh, little wrenches designed to reach and, uh, and turn these adjuster wheels. I just like to use a screwdriver or a little pry bar, unless I'm trying to adjust these from the back side. There's a little rubber plug right in here and you can actually adjust the rear brakes without pulling the drums off. But preliminarily, I'm gonna go ahead and push these guys back out to the approximate location in which I found it, which should be like right about here. And I will stick the drum on here and try to fit it and see how well it fits. But first, I need to clean it out some because there is some uh, residual brake fluid in the drum. Just give it a good spray and a rinse. Get all the dirt and stuff out of there. There we go. Okay, hey, see how we can't feel any binding right here? I think I can go a little bit tighter. I want these shoes to barely, barely start to touch the inside edge of the drum. 
just barely. Yep, you hear that? A little bit of scraping. I think I can go a little bit more. I like to set my rear drums up pretty tight. Uh, they will automatically adjust, hence the adjuster rod, but I don't like to let them roll out with them loose because then you'll get a soft and squishy pedal. Yeah, that's still pretty loose. A few more clicks on this. That feels pretty good. All right, one side is done. Let's run over to the other side and uh, repeat procedure. Then we'll get around to bleeding these guys out. Uh, I have since closed this adjuster, uh, adjuster, little bleeder, bleeder valve right there. We're not getting any free flowing fluid, so we'll just adjust uh, or we'll just bleed that out uh, once the other side is put back together. You can't bleed them with the pedal until the drums are on because if you give this pedal pressure, it's gonna push those cylinders out, and since there's nothing there to stop the shoes from spreading, uh, it'll just make the cylinders pop out and it'll dump all your fluid out everywhere and, uh, and ruin your cylinder. So you gotta have the drums on in order to make the adjustment. That's just the way it is. Ew, nasty. One more time. So since I've gone through this in, uh, in detail earlier, I'm gonna try to speed through this uh, next operation a little bit faster than the other side because you already know what I'm doing, kinda. So there's no reason to completely narrate the entire procedure with detailed explanation. This one's bent more than the other one was. It's gonna be a little tougher to dig it out. It's almost wrapped completely around this whole little deal here. Come on. You're stifling my progress. I have an idea. I'll take it by surprise. Just. See, everything is a hammer. Except for that. Come on, back over there. The struggle is real. We're getting close. I can feel it.
Got it. I mutilated it some. But I got it. So I must now unmutilate, flatten it out. Bend it open a little bit. There we go. You got it. Good, good, good. Let's pull the cylinder back out next. Now on the back side here. So I need a towel. Let's buy scripts on the brake line. A little tired than that. There we go. Good. So here, let's go over here and get these lines and whatnot removed and then pull that cylinder out. <laughs> Wrong way. Just when you think it's nice and loosey-goosey, it binds up again. Tisk tisk. There we go. Got that one. Again with the two bolts. And there is our damaged and leaking cylinder. Now, to clean off all of our nasty, round two. I have no more. Dave knows it's coming. Dave, here comes it now. <laughs> I was gonna come right for you. You're immature. No, we're having fun. Why? It is locked up. Last time I had it locked up, uh, it all disappeared when I was out of town. The Troy used it all and nothing. Oh, dirty transmission. Yeah, on a blown up transmission. Hundred dollars in brake clean is ruined. Yeah, kinda. I mean, it's you know what? It's worth it. Yeah, yeah. Well, he used like two cases or whatever on a blown up transmission. I didn't find the empty cans anywhere. I just think it all just disappeared. And all the blue towels left as well. Yeah, it's a break clean black market. I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay, new cylinder coming in. We've got the plug out of it. So, let me flip this ratchet around here. Oh, come here, ratchet. Now it's on tightening mode. Let's get this guy in position here and exercising trigger control. Get this bolt started. Where's that other one at? Set it down where I wouldn't lose it. I lost it. Oh, got it. There it is. Around the back side on the secondary fastener. Analog technology. Analog technology? That's weird. Are you freaking out over that time card over there? It was so good. It was a punch card. I have a punch card. It was, it was cheaper that way. You know why? You know why? Because when you 
when you document things on paper instead of digitally, nobody can come in through the internet that the machine's not supposed to be connected to and change what you wrote down. Oh! Exactly. What if human civilization was once a digital, uh, a digital civilization and then we lost our electricity and it, consequently we lost all of our knowledge from the ancient times. We it, already lost all our ancient knowledge. It could have happened. Uh, the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, things that you just don't talk about. It's like, well, I mean, that's just a myth. Just like T-Rex used to be a dragon. Well, I think T-Rex was a dragon. I mean, think about it. Every single culture on the planet, even cultures that never had contact with each other, had depictions of dragons. They're just big chickens. Yet we have never found a dragon. We've only found T-Rexes and little baby T-Rexes, but never, never a dragon. And if you think about T-Rex's little nubby arms, kind of like how a bat, you know how bats have those little nubby arms that they got the little claw things? Well, yeah, bats don't have skeletons because all that stuff is cartilage, so that means it would have uh, deteriorated and left. Theoretically, T-Rex could have been just a giant dragon. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm cooking your noodle now, all right, buddy. Yeah. I'll be coming back tomorrow. All right. You're out of here, buddy? I bid farewell. All right, well, have fun. Thank you for your day, sir. Yeah. Go and load that truck. Oh, Get out of here. Back the Bring back some brake clean so I can throw it at Dave. <laughs> okay, a little bit more brake clean on our adjuster rod right over here. Get that thing cleaned off nice and shiny like. Drop it. Clean it. Good. And throw some lube on here while we're at it. That purpley lube. Good. Very good. How's this thing? Oh, it goes on that side. Durr! Silly me. It's backwards from the other side. Okay. Big guy in position here. Slip the washer onto it. Where's that washer at? Right over here. Put that in there. And our little clip unit right here. Come here. Why won't you go together? Uh, flyers, 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 flyers. Come on, a little bit more. I know you guys can't see, sorry. Squeeze that a little tighter. Oh. Bend, I say, bend. There we go, got it. Okay, that thing is in position and secured. Let's go ahead. Straighten out our cylinder. Not indexed properly. Turn that. Get in there. And we'll come through with our backing plate pin. Retainer spring. Twist in position. Good. Okay, bottom spring. We'll come in here and reach around, hook it into the hook on the left side. And then, let's see how am I going to do this. Oh, 
Ding! Shoes are done. Point that thing in the correct direction. So soon we're gonna end up squeezing in these cylinders, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up that valve. That way we don't push a bunch of fluid or a bunch of air into the, uh, the line here. I guess while we're at it, I can pull off the uh, vice grips. So now, let's go ahead and get this guy kind of set up and hooked up and connected with its spring. Ow, cramp in my hand. Here we go. That goes in. We'll take the spreader bar, collapse it. Fit that into the groove on the other shoe. Throw some stuff on the floor. Cover it from the floor. Spray off the dirt. Okay, getting close. did not go as planned. Epic failure. Let's try again. I may have made an error in my order of operations on this side. This is slightly more finicky than I had anticipated. Stop doing that. There. Now the spreader bar fell out of it, but I think I can finagle that back into position. Yeah, that's fine. Good, the spring's in, this spring is in, spreader bar is in, the adjuster is in. Pretty good, okay, so now, I need to get the shoes in their correct position on the other side of their little stop here, so we'll just swing it out, push it back, swing that one out, push it back, good and good, excellent. Wash my fingerprints off. And we'll just go ahead and spin that adjuster wheel back some. That's gonna spread apart the tops of the shoes. Then we'll fit the drum. Where's the drum? On the floor. Dump it out. Spray it out. Pour it out. Threw that one in the trash can. What? I'm slacking. Speaking of slacking, I think I went too far on that adjuster. Sure did. Or these shoes are sitting too low. Hang on. Yeah, they were too low. It's actually 
really close. A couple more clicks. Got it. Cool. Okay. So now I'm going to let the truck down some. Uh, Dave's going to hop inside, pump the pedal up, and then we're going to bleed out these cylinders, get all the air out of it. And then uh, these brakes should be complete. Saturn coming down. Dave, what time is it? Like 3.30? Okay, let's open the door so we can hear Dave, or he can hear us. All right, go ahead and pump it up, sir, a couple times, and hold it. And holding. There's our fluid. Pump it up and hold it. Hold it. More fluid. There's some air. All right, pump it up and hold it. How's it going, buddy? Good, how about yourself? Not too bad. Got an engine mount or a trans mount for us? Pump it up. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. I just need a signature whenever you get a chance. You got it. Yep, hold it, Dave. We're both in here. Hang on, man, I'm coming. That works, yep. You don't have to get out of the truck. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. That's, that's service. Let's go to the other side. No more air coming out. Dave, pump it up. All right, guys, have a good one. Thank, Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. No oh, there's some air. Pump it up. No air. Pump it up one more time. All right, very good. No more air. Thank you, sir. I believe we are finished with this operation as of right now. All right, folks, that's gonna probably be a wrap on this particular situation over here. I've got the interior and dash disassembled, so uh, there's gonna be no test drive on it. Uh, so unfortunately, if you wanna stick around until we can prove out these brakes are no longer locking up, you have to wait until tomorrow for when, uh, when that actuator arrives. So having said all that, again, I have nothing more to offer you in this particular Saturn other than I thank you for watching this video. As always, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button right down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a break job, in a dash halfway disassembly diagnostic, in a day, in a transmission.